Now we're joined by PIMCO's Executive Vice President Tony Crescenzi, who says that uh, no day of reckoning on the immediate horizon, but certainly the spending of this country presents an urgent problem that needs to be addressed. He joins us live from Newport Beach, California. Tony, always great to have you on the Hi, show. Margaret. Thank you. I, I mean, PIMCO essentially made this call months ago in deciding to not only not to buy treasuries, but, but to unload uh, the exposure there. Is this uh, the same worldview as S&P? Well, the decision is more a so-called duration bet than it is a credit bet. We're not betting that the United States is suddenly going to become a bad credit. Uh, remember, treasuries are the most tied to inflation rates and to uh, the Fed funds rate. These are two things that will be moving up. Now, the Fed funds rate won't be moving up, we don't believe, this year, but the inflation rate certainly is. And so in an environment like this, where the economy is growing nominally, about 4 to 5 percent, it's a better time to be investing in credit instead of duration, again, to reduce the interest rate risk. Mm -hmm. So we don't see material rise in rates, but why be part of this rate rise balloon when it's taking off nonetheless? Now, you do believe inflation's going up despite the fact that we keep hearing, you know, put aside gas, put aside food costs going up when you look at, at inflation. Inflation is accelerating somewhat, but not to high levels. Remember, it hit a low, the lowest since the 1950s, of 0.6 percent on a year-over-year -year basis. In the fall, it's now about 1 percent year-over-year, 1.1 percent. We expect it to get to about one and a half or so by the end of the year, and maybe two percent in two years. Hmm. People make the mistake in thinking that all the money the Fed's put in the system will cause massive inflation, but that can only be the case if those reserves, the trillion and a half that the Fed's put in the system, are converted into loans and hence wind up in the financial system and hence push up final demand. Uh, but that money's stored away, and so the Fed's purchases, QE, uh, do not really wind up in the financial system in a way that could cause meaningful inflation. But we, again, expect inflation to rise nonetheless, and it's a reason to avoid Treasuries in an environment like this. Yeah. Well, just yesterday from S&P, their warning was that, you know, they're not convinced that Washington will come to consensus within the next few years and, and really reduce spending in, in a credible way. Um, but when you're looking at, at, at Treasuries and, and the bond markets right now, do you still see relative calm? I mean, you hear from the White House that the bond markets are calm, therefore not as panicked about the debt ceiling being raised. You hear that that fear just isn't present. Is, is that the right way to read this sort of lack of reaction that we're seeing? Well, what I described in talking about inflation is more a concern for an interest rate market. The concerns you're describing are for a credit market. Right. We don't see this morphing from an interest rate market to a credit market. But these issues that that the Congress, the world, is talking about with respect to the U.S. are very, very important with respect to our financial future. For example, when we think of the Medicare program, it's very large and growing. There's something called the Medicare D program enacted in 2003, uh, prescri the prescription drug program. It'll cost the U.S. about $55 billion this year, over 20 years by some estimates, $16 trillion. Now, unfortunately, we can't afford such a thing. And so the 2012 election will have a very important element here. Mm -hmm. uh, will we be investing in the elderly, the seniors, or will we be investing in our future in the sense that we're investing in infrastructure and education? Now, of course, we need to do both. All citizens deserve their say. But to what degree will we emphasize health care over these things that provide long-term growth right. and, of course, better fiscal sustainability. Those are the key questions that won't likely be resolved this year or next or until the 2012 election. Uh, but the other questions that are popping up are where are the bond vigilantes and will the U.S. dollar re lose reserve currency status? I mean, when you hear people talking in those terms, are they overreacting in far too early in those predictions? Well. Half of the audience, so to speak, for Treasuries uh, is the foreign market. Uh, the foreign investors hold about half of the near $10 trillion in Treasuries outstanding. Now, these are in many ways natural buyers and will continue to be buying Treasuries for quite some time. Uh, there are 10 trillion of so-called reserve assets in the world. China has 3 trillion of them, uh, Japan about a trillion. These reserve assets grow when nations take in more dollars than they, they, they let out. Now, they grew this amount, these reserve assets, 1.7 trillion in the past year. Now, where would those monies go? Would mm -hmm. China, for example, decide to put that money in an American bank, in a European bank? Highly improbable. It would rather 
put it at the Federal Reserve Bank, and that's where it holds the treasuries that it that it purchases. And so reserve assets by their growth, and they are growing at a rapid pace, as I said, 1.7 trillion just in the last year alone, 600 billion for China. That will be a source of natural demand. Now, one last thing on this. The dollar as a reserve asset was 70 percent about seven years ago uh, of the world's reserve assets. Now it's 63. The euro's gone from 20 to 27. That kind of thing is likely to continue this diversification but no rapid diversification because we can't envision mm -hmm. where the world would would park its reserve assets where would china house its reserve assets does it have a bond market to house 10 trillion of reserve assets no and so the loss of reserve status is likely to occur gradually as it has the last seven eight years uh, as we go forward and until uh, they're more mature and deep in liquid markets but it's going to take a very long time and by us time thank you very much tony crescenzi joining us thanks